Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Amazon AWS Bedrock service. Um, so just recently I joined this Dev Day Hackathon which was sponsored by Amazon and the whole idea of, of this hackathon is to implement the AWS Bedrock service. Uh, so what is Bedrock? Bedrock is Amazon's fully managed uh, service in order for you to use their foundation models uh, from different AI companies like Llama, uh, Anthropic, um, Cohere. And so you could use them um, as an, by accessing their APIs. Now, aside from accessing foundation models, they do have other services and you can take a look at their uh, website and, and read all of the different services that they're offering aside from accessing foundation models. Um, so the first thing that you need to do in order to access these models is to set up your um, IM user. Now, this is where the first uh, um, hiccup that I've, I've encountered. It took me a while to actually get my user properly set up. Uh, user's permission, I mean. Um, I'm not gonna show you what I did because really I was just fumbling here and there. At the end of the day, I had to redo my IM user, delete my old IM user from, from the past and just redo the whole process again. A process that I chose to forget a long time ago and I have to remember. Um, so anyway, once, once you get passed through that uh, hurdle, um, the next thing that you need to do obviously is implement uh, their API. Uh, so they do have pricing models for different models and also what types of services you're trying to access. So there's a different price modeling for text generation, for image generation and for embeddings. Uh, they do support a lot of foundation models depending on the region that you're using. Uh, some regions do not have a, 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 a or it does have only have a shorter list compared to others and some other regions they don't even offer right now. Um, so for me, implementing it in my AI project uh, during that hackathon, so I expect it to be you know, really quick. Um, it, it was some sort, somewhat quick, but also not, not very straightforward. Uh, and what I meant about that is if I was going to use uh, the Titan model, which Amazon's, uh, that's Amazon's model, they're, they're called the Titan models. Um, and then if I decided to use, uh, say, Llama's models, I have to write different code just to query uh, the model and then also parse the response. So if I'm using Titan, I have to write separate code for that. And if I'm using uh, Llama, then I have to write a separate code for it. Um, this for me was somewhat um, um, inconvenient um, for the part where like, if I'm using an API and I'm paying for this service, I would expect it like, you know, just abstract all of those problems and just give me the solution, give me the response. And, you know, instead of me trying to, you know, write different types of responses for different types of models. Um, maybe in the future they will do that, but for now that was the thing that I saw. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't impossible. It's not like it's not manageable, you can do it. Um, but then for me, it was, it was more like, you know, that's, that's more code than I that I want to write. Um, the uh, performance-wise, I was not I was not impressed with the Titan models. Uh, half of the time when I was asking it, it was just telling me, you know, 
couldn't get the answer, like so they you know, can't answer that question. Uh, Llama 3 was pretty much the same as if I was using my local models um, using a Llama or Llama CPP. And that one is free, you know, you don't have to pay for that. Uh, but for using this API service, you have to do that. You have to pay for the service. Uh, one thing that I liked that I tested is the uh, image generation using Stability AI's uh, uh, foundation model. Uh, it was my first time using that as an API. Um, and implementing it wasn't difficult. So that, that I, th I thought that was, oh, okay, this is great, you know. Um, even though I was writing responses for the text generations, like, and then the image generation, uh, it, do, it does have some sort of a pattern on how you uh, you input the parameters. So uh, it's not too bad, you know. Um, now, how good are the images? Uh, it probably depends on how you write the prompt, you know. Um, but using the, the image generation uh, also costs money, m way more than using the, uh, the text generation models. Um, for that day, like during the hackathon, uh, AWS was giving out this uh, temp, temp security keys and, and credentials so that you could use the foundation models. Uh, I got access to those, but then at the end of the day, I, I could not make them work because you know, I was I was getting this like security problem or whatever, and so I just like you know I just defaulted back to using my personal uh, AWS account for that hackathon, thinking that oh well, you know I'm not going to incur that much, right? Um, it, it, you know I just checked today, and it, it, you know I for the short amount of usage that I've used, I. I was billed like five dollars, right? Uh, it's not it's not much if you think about it, but that's you know if you kept on using that like <laughs> that short period of time on a daily basis, you'll probably be shocked at the end of the month that you have to pay for this. So you, you use it in moderation, um, and uh, it, at, le at least for now, it's probably a service that I'm I'm not going to use. Uh, since there are better alternatives out there, cheaper alternatives, even free alternatives. Um, but um, overall, uh, the takeaway that I I got from from using their uh, their service um, is you have to be patient. <laughs> you have to be patient with setting it up. Um, you have to be patient with like you know, just writing the response because you have to write different responses for, for while, when using different foundation models. And uh, you know, just the fact that you, you, you're paying, you're paying for the service, you know, um, which is probably there are free, uh, cheaper alternatives out there right now. Um, anyway, that's the whole video. Um, here's a short, uh, demo on, on how I use it. It's probably not very obvious. Um, like I'm using the found the, the bedrock uh, foundation models. Uh, but just the same, this is just like the uh, the demo that uh, I sent in the, the hackathon. All right, um, let me know if you have any questions, if you have any comments, and till next time, peace. So this demo is gonna show the avatar um, Talking, uh, it uses AWS Bedrock Llama 3 um, model. Um, it's doing streaming response, and uh, it is also uses the stable diffusion for image creation. And then the next one I'll, is also going to demo the uh, uh, launch darkly feature flagging. So I'm going to turn the uh, um, a flag on and off and it will change the neural voice of the avatar. So here we go. Hi, how can I help you? Hello, what's your name? Hello there. My name is Ada and I'm delighted to make your acquaintance. 
I'm a helpful assistant, and I'm here to assist you with any questions or tasks you may have. I'm named after Ada Lovelace, the world's first computer programmer, and I'm proud to carry on her legacy of innovation and problem solving. How can I help you today? In two sentences, can you describe her to me? Ada Lovelace was a British mathematician and writer, often considered the world's first computer programmer, who is known for her work on Charles Babbage's proposed mechanical general purpose computer, the analytical engine. She is also recognized for her vision and insight into the potential of the analytical engine, which went beyond mere calculation and into the realm of what we now call computer programming. Show a, a portrait of Ada Lovelace in color. Here is a portrait of Ada Lovelace in color. Great, thank you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to chat with you about Ada Lovelace. If you have any more questions or need assistance with anything else, feel free to ask. Can you tell me a story in 10 sentences? Here's a story about Ada Lovelace. She met Charles Babbage, who was designing a mechanical computer called the Analytical Engine. Ada is a visa potential for the Analytical Engine to go beyond mere calculation and perform any tasks that could be expressed in a series of steps. She wrote a note to Babbage, suggesting that the analytical engine could be used to create music and even write poetry. Babbage was impressed by her ideas and asked her to write a notice on the analytical engine. Her work, Notice on the Analytical Engine, is now considered to be the first computer program. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Ada, your helpful assistant. I'm here to assist you with any questions or tasks you may have. What can I help you with today?